Hey, look, without business systems in place, you are in business, not a business. Uh, this may not seem perfectly clear to you, but let's look at it this way. There are people who trade time for money. They are in business, right? Someone that goes in, maybe they clean houses, they do yard work, um, they show up as a, maybe a social media you know, manager and marketer, they do the specific work, they're editing things. There's, there's people that are in business, but it's different to be a business. See, if you're in business, you can't take a break, right? That means that you're trading time for money, which means if you don't work, you don't get paid. And so you are in business being a a business means you can separate yourself from everything and you can let the business still run. It's called being in business, but a business. It's actually dialed in, it's kind of, kind of merging the two together. But here's the difference between the two. To be in business means I do everything, right? To be a business means I have a system for how I did this thing so I can hire someone and delegate this task so they can do it. Like if we listen today, I'm gonna break down specifically how to figure out what businesses are, so what you kind of have to understand about it, but also the businesses need Needs for systems. Some are small, some are very big and intricate. There's a bunch of them that exist, but you really got to get this. And it's literally the only way to achieve or keep your sanity long term. If you're a person that is in business at some point in time and that from now until you are done ever working, you're going to want to take a break. You're going to want to be able to not feel the stress and the weight of having to make every dollar do everything and have everything run through you. So to have a business is something where you own and, and really operate systems that then run people that run the business. That's, that's the difference. And if you can and step into that realm, you'll find that you keep your sanity. You actually have more success because more can be done that's not predicated upon your individual efforts, but also the business can grow, can expand, reach more people, and it actually becomes its own entity outside of what you're doing. Or you can have a hybrid. There can be parts of your business that you do have to be part of. I do have to create content for my business for you, but I don't know what happens after this. It just shows up on the internet, right? I'm sitting here recording this in real time right now, but realize that at some point in time, I'll give it to somebody else and they have systems that they run within my business where that shows up in the right manner at the right time for you to consume it like this, right? This is how things run and should run in the world. If you want to have great impact and have great reach and create great income for your life at some point in the future. So focus on this. And as we talk about this today, really get this because I went through the gamut with this. My first business was a gym business. Nine months into this business, I find myself sitting in the front space, like this front desk area of my, we'll call it my gym, which it was. And I had a full gym on this side. And then you would have been where the front door is at, right to the left was the front door and then you have my main office right there but front desk check-in computers right here and a guy rolls up in a harley and he parks the harley right outside the window was window sidewalk street and so he parked right there by the street and he gets off the harley walks in and goes are you anthony trucks so yeah he goes here you go and i take the envelope he turns around and he walks out and what i find was i open this envelope it's from the landlord hadn't paid rent repeat this and kind of change it couldn't pay rent but hadn't paid rent in like three months so my first business i'm like oh Landlords not even to notice if I don't pay rent. Now they noticed, right? 90 days goes by, no checks. Someone's getting bothered. So I get this check, this uh, this letter that comes in and says you have to pay $250,000 uh, in the next 16 weeks or you get evicted because it's called an eviction process. They want all their money now. You got to vacate the premises in 16, uh, sorry, 14 days. I owed 16,000. I didn't have the money to pay it. Had no idea how to solve this problem. And so as a former NFL athlete, I felt like a full failure. I felt like I was letting everybody, my, my family down, my, my whole world down, wasn't doing my promise as a husband, there's a lot of things that wasn't going right, but it was all because I, I didn't understand the business was going to run. I put a lot into this money, time, energy, but I hadn't put any thought behind how to run a business. I had no clue how to do it. And so I'm in this situation feeling the repercussions of inactions of building systems. I was in business, but I was not a business. I was the one where I was in there training, marketing, advertising, doing sales, cleaning things up, scheduling things, just putting stuff together, everything. It was all Anthony. So I, I was in business, but I did not have a business business. And if I didn't do something, didn't get done. And if those things didn't get done, the business didn't make any money. There's no revenue. Everything falls apart. And so I stepped back and I feared that I would be in financial ruin if I don't fix this. Like I was looking at a lifetime of having to find a way to get myself back to financial freedom or even to a place of having financial stability. And I also would have to go back to possibly work at a nine to five. I'd, I'd worked a job job, a nine to five for one week. When I got out of the NFL. I went to work as a, fit, a personal trainer at a gym, 24 hour fitness. I was like, this isn't for me. And I left that to do what I, I was doing the gym. And so my thought was like, I don't want to be a nine to five worker. I don't, I don't have, that's not part of what feels comfortable to me. For some people it's necessary, fills their needs, security, and their desire. Totally great. For me, it's not for me. 
And so I had this fear of like, how do I do this? Now, fast forward a little bit. I got to this point where I've, I've made millions in business over the years. I've, I've mostly because I realized the missing piece of my skill sets, my abilities was systems to make everything work, to be able to take ideas out of my head, systemize how they'd run and then delegate them to somebody else so I can go back to doing what I do best. I do this right here best. I don't edit, post, schedule the best. Someone loves doing it though. So I hired that person to help me. Here's my system, run it the way I'd like to run it and it runs and everybody wins. And so what happens is that's gotta be the big piece. When you do that, like I currently feel more capable to do any crazy harebrained schemed idea than I've ever felt in my life. I don't have fear about starting a new business challenge or taking something on because I know the true success is systemizing how that thing works, not just doing it one time uh, and, and having it figured out right now and then have to refigure it out later on and refigure it out later on. But I go, let me figure it out this time. And then what I'll do is I'll systemize it to where I can next time not have to refigure it out. I've already figured it out. So I just do it the same way every time it's documented, right? A system and it allows things to run and actually scale without me. So I have team members that can do things at better levels than I ever could have because I was able to create systems to let them do stuff. And so that's a big piece. Now, what I did in this moment back in the day, we'll call it, is I went out and I hired somebody. It's the first step of it. You got to find somebody that can help you. I hired a $6,000 coach with $4,000 to my name. I literally told him, I said, if you don't do what you're supposed to do right, I can't pay you money, All right, You know that, right? You're, I know you're 6K. I can't pay you the more money. Now, what's interesting is like my wife, my friends, they all said, chalk it up. They're like, dude, just chalk it up. Go get bankrupt, file bankruptcy, step into something else. I was like, I don't want to do that. And so I, I went and got this person and he gave me something that worked. What he gave me was systems. He said, that's what you have. He's like, you have no idea how people come in. There's no way to track or optimize that. You have no idea what people do from a tour, what they're given as a tour. You don't know how to sign them up. There's, there's nothing that you have no processes. There's no way to duplicate what you did one time properly. You'll never do it again like that. And if you do, it'll be a straight fluke. See, the idea is I got to create a system that has this experience happen over and over again for every person. And so I started doing that. And what happened was I went from in 2009 when I had all this going on to where I went from one month, like about to be evicted to a few months later, I was able to actually buy a new vehicle. Like I eventually expanded the business. Like I, all these cool things happened because I was able to learn systems. And this was in a small town of Antioch back in, you know, the East San Francisco Bay area where I grew up. There was not much money. It was during the recession. So businesses weren't doing very well. And I was, I'd never even been a business owner. Like, I don't know what I was doing, but I was able to solve it by systems, right? Not always skill sets, systems, right? And so it worked because I focused on removing myself from processes by training people that I delegated things to and trusting they'd follow the system. Now it's a different skill set. They really have to go into a point of going, hey, here's a system, I give it to them. They don't follow it perfectly. It ain't their business. So they don't actually do everything the way it should. But my effort shouldn't be in trying to do the job. It should be in trying to get them to do the job properly based on the steps and the process I laid out, the system in place. And so what I realized was instead of doing the job, I could do it faster if I had somebody else do it, right? Think about that. Like the fastest way for you to do the job is to never do it at all. Somebody else does it and it gets done. So I go, if I have, can give effort and focus to optimizing their ability to do this task without me, I've won. Like I have systems in my own business. I just actually, we brought a new person on recently and I developed an entire four page structure of systems for three different parts of the business that have filmed videos and step-by-step -step and links and logins, it's all there. And I just, I clicked a, a little link said, here's what you gotta do. Any questions, let me know. Now I, I am happy that I have an A plus person. They took that and they have not bothered me with anything. They've, I'm pretty stinking thorough though, but they go through it and it's just step by step by step. You can't get lost. My, my 13 year old twins could do this stuff. And the idea is that's a flow that they can just go into and go, okay, click this button, go here, drag this here, type this here, ask for this from this person. It's just streamlined flow. The more you can create that, the better your business goes. So that's gotta be the goal. So how do we create systems? How do you do that, Ant? I didn't know back in the day. Here's what he sent me. I said, hey, how do I do this system that you're talking about? He goes, I'm gonna email you a piece of paper. Just print it up and use that. I go, okay, great. He prints me or sends me a piece of paper and I open it up and it's a sheet that just says one, two, three to 10, one through 10. I go, what is this? He goes, that's your, that's your sheet to make a system. I said, what are you talking about? All the system is, he says, is it's just you going step by step what you do. That's it. He's like, all you have to do is think about the first thing you do and the second thing you do. He says, how do you open the gym each day? I say, well, I go in and I put the key in the door. No, I said, I open the door. He goes, what do you do to open the door? I said, I put the key in the door. He says, write that down. I put the key in the door, turn it counterclockwise. Okay, cool. I've unlocked the door. He says, then what? Well, then I go into, no, what do you do before you go and turn in anything? He goes, I goes, open the door, right? He says, yeah, open the door. Right, open the door and prop it open. Okay, cool. Then 
one. Okay, then I walk across the floor to the keypad for the alarm and I turn the alarm off. Now you're getting it, Ant. Okay, cool. Then what do you do? I said, then I go around to the back of the front desk and I turn the computer on. Great. Then what do you do? Then I turn the computer screen on. Okay, great. Then what do you do? Then I go and turn the main lights on. Okay, and that was it. That was my opening system. So I could give that to a new hire and go, hey, this is how we open every day. I'm not going to be here. You're going to be here. You're going to open us up at eight o'clock. I'll arrive at 830. Here's how you open the gym. I never have to think about how to tell them to open the gym again because they learned it and if they forgot it's on a piece of paper how do you give somebody a tour anthony i don't know i'd start asking questions no what piece of machinery do you show them first well this one why that one right and i would go through a process of how the tour would be given for each new potential client so these systems got created little by little by little now there's three ways you can work through making your systems for your business here's the three ways i recommend there's it's I mean, you could break it down to maybe four but i'm gonna give you three the first one is think about what you do and write it down on a sheet of paper like I just told you and then go and do it and then find out if you miss something and you need to add something or if a point is irrelevant you can remove it right so you literally can say well this is what I do for how I uh, I don't know for how I give a tour in my gym this is what I do for how I talk through onboarding a new client great go write it down and then go do it like walk somebody like we'll call it uh, give a role play with a friend and walk them through it and go oh you know what I forgot I actually do this too perfect throw it in there that's a way to make a system you step by step it go through it one time to make sure you got everything and then it's a living breathing document if for some reason you do find you want to add tweak adjust go make a change reprint it out you're good to go or if it's digital just change the document and then they can access the document on google drive or whatever it is right there the second way to do it is to write it down as you do it in real time as opposed to doing it in advance you just sit down and go real time what am i doing this okay i'm doing this what's next and this and i hate this way by the way personally it's not a good fit for my brain because my brain goes and if i have to stop the brain it, it gets frustrated so some people like this though because they can go and okay, go what do I do now I do this then what do I do and they do this that's a back and forth some people can do it if you can do it kudos more power to you not for my brain the third way that I I believe is a great way to do it is you have someone watch you do it separate human being and write down every step you've taken right it's it whatever step you've taken just they just look at you and go oh, do that then do that and do that and boom you're good and then from there now what happens is there's systems that you can refine based on you just doing what you did my mindlessly rolling and them just documenting what they saw you do. You can then re like meet with them later and do a breakdown review of how it worked and how it flowed. And oh, okay, I see what I did there. Oh, that makes sense. And now you have a system you can give to somebody else. The fourth way if you want to throw it in there is say there's someone in your team that doesn't report to you directly or you don't do their job the exact same way, but they're doing a task and you find that, man, if I lost this person, I'd have no idea how to do this. What you do, fourth way for a system to operate and exist in your business is you have them do the exact same three I told you and deliver to you the system. So for example, if I have someone in the company that just happens to create social content and I don't know what exactly they're doing, but I pay them, I can say, hey, do you mind documenting your process as a system so we can review and see if there's a better way to optimize it? Or for some reason, um, I have to take over because you get sick or something, I can go and revisit this document and keep us on track. Or if you want to take a vacation at some point, I can know what's going on so I don't, I don't lose track of everything. Now they can create the system you store it inside of your company and now boom you got what you need right those are the ways you focus on making systems and you already have just heard me tell you why they're incredibly important because when you got them in place your business becomes a business and you're not just in business big separation there that's it if you enjoyed this video make sure to tune into that one right there it's got some cool things for you uh i break them down just like i break these down this one's gonna be one that'll change your world if you take the information apply it and as always do the dark work so you can make shift happen